Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video I'd like to talk a little bit about pulse oximeters. So these little devices that many people buy to monitor their health for various reasons. They've become hugely popular during the COVID uh, outbreak because they've either been handed out to you from your hospital or potentially many people have bought them from pharmacies, from you know health stores, supermarkets even. So they're quite readily available. They're very useful things. We use them in the clinic all the time, but it's important to understand what they measure and how to use them in the correct way. The reason why I'm making this video is because on my other channel, I received a comment from a gentleman who told me that basically he was driving one day and then he was using this while he was driving. It read that his pulse rate was 180, so he went to the hospital to get it checked out. He went to the emergency room to, because he was scared that his pulse rate was 180. Of course he got there and it was normal. So this is the thing, you need to know how to use it, otherwise you may end up getting scared about your health for no good reason. So first of all, let's just briefly touch upon what this little device might measure. Now some of them will look different, N not all of them look this, the same. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, but most of them they're like a little clip that hooks onto a finger and then it measures the peripheral oxygen saturation and the pulse rate. So this is the peripheral pulse rate. First of all, when you use it, you need to make sure that one, it's the finger that you're using it on is warm enough. If you've got very cold fingers, if you've got nail polish, nail varnish, things like that, it may not pick up the right signal because there's not either not a good circulation through that finger, so if it's very cold, or the nail polish is preventing this little light inside to actually pass through because that's what measures the pulse rate and the oxygen saturation. So that's the first thing. Make sure you're using it on a finger that's relatively warm. So maybe be in your home, not be outside somewhere. The second thing would be, because like I said, it measures the flow, the circulation. So if your finger is too compressed, for example, too tight, if your hand is really gripping this thing, you won't get a good reading because the flow won't be regular through your finger. So that's really important. So for example, what I would recommend is that you let, let it hang loose. So once you clip it on, let's say like this, you just let your hand hang. Usually it's rubbery inside, so it won't fall out. So see, it's quite resilient. I can't really get it off. Even if it's like a very cheap pulse oximeter, it won't fall off. But when I press the button, I'm pretty sure that if I leave it carefully, it will start reading. And I can see that most of them have either some bars that go up and down, or they show you an actual pulse wave. So when you see that that is regular, either the bars going up and down in a regular fashion, or the pulse wave being fairly regular, you can know that you're basically getting a good reading. The second piece of advice I would have is that you need to let it calculate and average out the values over at least a few seconds. So don't go with the first value that you see. So I would say wait for 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, to make sure that what you're getting there is an actual good reading. Because like I said, it averages out things over time. So for example, now I've left it alone for a bit and my oxygen saturation is 97% and my pulse rate is 97, which is quite high, but it's probably because I'm also talking at the same time. I'm moving around a little bit. So so that's absolutely fine. I wouldn't panic because this is probably why my pulse rate is higher. There is a reason for it. So if you've been exercising, if you're running around and your pulse rate's high, it's in the 100s, for example, it may be absolutely normal. The next thing I would like to point out is the fact that this pulse oximeter, because it measures the peripheral pulse, it may not be super accurate for patients who have an irregular heartbeat. That's something that can happen when you have, for example, atrial fibrillation, when the heartbeats are irregular. And it means that the heart may beat stronger, some beats may be stronger, some beats may be less strong. So the pulse that goes through the artery in the arm might be stronger or weaker, or may be irregular, it may not fall rhythmically. So that means that this thing will try to pick up whatever gets to your finger, but it not, may, may not be the exact pulse that your heart is generating, because that can be high, stronger or less strong. 
So that's why in some conditions it's actually important to leave it on longer to try to get as accurate a reading as possible. Now even in patients with an irregular heartbeat it will still average out a good enough reading but you need to leave it on longer. So that's why if you leave it on for just a bit it may not give you the right numbers. The same goes for the oxygen saturation. So if you just pop it on and look at the first number that shows up, let's see what shows up, but it may actually be a completely wrong reading unless you let it run for a little bit. Like I, remember, like I said, letting your finger loose, maybe on your knee, for example, on your resting it on, on a surface, on a table, something like that, in order to not apply pressure. So, for example, now my oxygen saturation is reading 95 which some people may be worried, oh, this is a low oxygen saturation, but it's not. It's probably just because I'm moving around, it's not picking up the right signal. So it's really important to, to bear in mind that this little machine is very basic. It can give you very good readings, it can be quite accurate, but it's not always the best unless you know how to interpret the values. Now, what may normal values look like? So normally, People have a heart rate somewhere in between 50 and 80. That could be perfectly normal, depending on the situation. At rest, most people's heart rates are between 60 and 80. Some people may have a lower heart rate, especially people who have been exercising a lot. They, their heart is really, really strong. They may have a lower basal resting heart rate. That can also happen in patients who are taking beta blockers, for example, medications that slow down the heart rate. So a low heart rate is not always concerning. It depends on the situation. Now, a high heart rate, so generally over 80, can happen for a number of reasons. In my case now, because I'm moving around, my heart rate is 99. That's what the device is saying. That is probably normal, just because of the context. So it's important to take into consideration the context in which you are measuring the values. Now, when it comes to oxygen saturation, this is a little bit tricky because oxygen saturation is rarely 100% or 99%. A normal oxygen saturation is generally anything above 94%. So if the machine is picking up something above 94%, Generally, it will be around 96 to 97 percent. That's absolutely normal. That's a normal oxygen saturation in the periphery. It can be higher. It can be lower. If you're, for example, on oxygen and it shows 100 percent, that can be possible. But, for example, this little device that I have is so basic that it doesn't even have the possibility to show 100. It can show probably 99 as the highest oxygen saturation because it only has two digits. So generally 94 to 99 is the range of normal oxygen saturation. And for some people, even a slightly lower oxygen saturation than that could still mean that their oxygen levels in the blood can be still relatively normal. Generally, unless the oxygen saturation drops below 90 or 89%, it's probably in the range of relatively normal. But it again, it depends on the clinical context, depends on what kind of underlying conditions you might have. So for example, someone with advanced lung disease will have a slightly lower oxygen saturation, but in their case, it may mean that they don't necessarily need more oxygen. So for example, uh, patients with advanced COPD, for example, may have an oxygen saturation between 88 and 92%. And in such cases, it can be a normal range to be in because a higher oxygen saturation, for example, induced by having extra oxygen in that situation, especially if you're not ventilating well, can actually cause CO2 retention, which is a different, a whole different ball game. So for patients who know that they have some respiratory issues, generally their physician should explain a little bit how to use the pulse oximeter and what values to look out for, because there may be a target range for their oxygen saturation. But for everyone else who doesn't have a problem with their oxygen and their blood, I have a feeling that these things will only show you a normal oxygen saturation. You have to be quite ill to have a low oxygen reading after leaving it on correctly, leaving it for uh, to stabilize, to measure it correctly. After that, you most people won't have an abnormal reading unless they are quite unwell. And in that case, probably, yes, seeking medical attention would be needed, but not only for the oxygen problem, because other 
issues may be at play as well. There may be a severe pneumonia, you may be feeling really, really unwell, chest pain, etc., struggling. So it's not only the oxygen level or the pulse rate that you're seeing that should be um, driving you to go seek medical attention. I hope this was a helpful explanation and I'll see you in future videos. All the best.